Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited for this video because I'm going to be hitting three sweet spots that have been going viral in London. They've been going viral on Instagram and YouTube and I'm going to be going there and taste testing them, seeing if they're worth it or if they're overhyped. I've been to one of these three spots before and I actually really like that one. So I'm going to save that one for last. And the first two are going to be two spots that have never been before. So without further ado, let's go and hit up the first spot. This is the first spot. Hiya. Is your flagship one the cardamom one or the cinnamon one? Like cinnamon. the cinnamon one. Yeah. Can I get one of those? Please? So just like that, we picked up the goods. We got the first one in the bag. As you saw, I went to Buns from Home. I'll tell you a little bit more about them in a second. But um, I'm going to stop at Gentleman's Baristas as well to get a nice flat white. And then both of those will get a little bit of history and a verdict as to whether they're worth it or not worth it. So I'll be getting a coffee and then I'll be sitting here giving you a little review. Gentleman Baristas was like an impromptu stop because I've heard a lot about them. It was founded by two people and they basically wanted to inspire well-mannered coffee. So not only did they want to have excellent coffee, but also they wanted the vibe to be really friendly staff that the customer service was excellent and that it really felt like a community run place. But I guess for me, the proof is in the pudding, like either the coffee is standout or it isn't. But as you can see, the coffee is beautiful. And I went for a cortado with oatmeal, always oatmeal. And that is good. So first stop, as I said, was buns from home. And, um, Oh God, this is London traffic for you. So buns from home actually started during the COVID pandemic. So the founder, Barney Goff, he was just making these buns in his mom's kitchen, hence the name buns from home. So when the first pandemic hit, he decided to start baking. So he made cinnamon rolls, cardamom rolls, and like cream filled buns in his mom's kitchen and started delivering them in the neighborhood of Notting Hill, which is where he lived via bicycles in the morning. And he printed flyers and he had an email newsletter, but he was quickly oversubscribed, so oversubscribed that he had to have his brother, but also a whole group of mates help him out delivering these buns with bicycles. And fast forward a few years later, and they've crowdfunded and they don't have one shop, they have six shops across London. So they started in Portobello Road, but then they have one in Notting Hill, Soho, Covent Garden. And I'm here on the Green Park Road, going to Piccadilly Circus and giving them a go. I've never had them before. So this is what the pièce de résistance look like. Given it's my first time trying it, I mean, can you see that cinnamon? It's extremely sticky at the bottom. I went for the, the, the OG, so basically went for their, their best seller, which is just a cinnamon roll. So the price for this was £3.50. Let's see if it's worth it or not. It's probably the cheapest place we're going to today out of the three. So if it's, if it's as good as they say, then it's definitely worth it. Wow, wow, I'm almost speechless. Like, I think this summarizes it. I'm a huge fan of the Gale cinnamon rolls, but this really tops it. It's like the best cinnamon roll I've ever had. So I think if this is the theme of the day and how the day is gonna progress, I'm gonna have a very good day. Definitely 10 out of 10, just really messy and sticky. And I don't say 10 out of 10, ever. Buns from home, worth it. I can see I can see how this has expanded so quickly in three years. And I can see why so many people invested into it. It is very, very good. So good to you, Barney. Good on you. Well done. Fantastic roll. So this was spot one. I'm going to enjoy my coffee, have the rest of this roll, and I'll see you at spot two, which is actually just down this road. So I had the cinnamon bun. Like I said, I'm actually really, really impressed. I can't believe how good that was. That exceeded my expectations. So it's a good start to the journey. And I forgot to say the coffee at Gentleman Baristas was 3.20 because of the addition of oat milk. So it's not the cheapest coffee out there. And that I would rate like an eight and a half out of 10, purely because in London there's lots of good coffee shops. And so you don't necessarily have to go there to get yourself a good cup of tea. All in all, a really good start to the day. Got buzzing now. So ready for my next stop. And luckily for me, the next stop is like, five feet away from where we were just now. So let's go to number two, which is Richou. Richou, I think they say. French-inspired brasserie, which is very, very famous for 
I don't know if you can see it, the coffin went absolutely viral on Instagram. I'll show you a close up. We'll get that good piece and we'll give you a taste yeah. test review. Let's see if it's any good. And just like that, like literally three minutes in, and we're at stop number two, which is Rishu. I hope the audio is okay, please excuse it. There's a lot of traffic. I'm sitting right on the main road. I'm literally sitting by the window with all the goods and all the pastries. So this place is actually a restaurant. It's like a Parisian-inspired brasserie-style restaurant, but very high-end. It was started by two ex-Michelin star trained chefs. And they're very, very famous for on Instagram for the Cruffin. So the humble Cruffin is a cross between a uh, donut and a muffin and it's very generously filled with, well, my one is filled with vanilla bean and strawberry rhubarb. So this is what it looks like, super flaky, dusted in cinnamon sugar, and it's massive. I don't know if you can see just how massive it is. So essentially, they're, they've got extremely viral on Instagram. I've always wanted to try a cruffin. I've never tried a cruffin. I've only ever tried the cronut. The lady actually recommended me to try the Oreo one. That's her favorite, but I, I didn't fancy Oreo flavored and I wanted something fruity. So she said that the other one they had is vanilla bean and raspberry and that one is apparently very, very sweet. So this one, I guess, with the addition of the rhubarb, isn't so sweet. I mean, there's no, there's no nice way to do this. I'm just gonna go right in. There's no, there's no etiquette way to eat this. Mm. It's filled with rhubarb cream in the middle of something. I don't know if you can see that. It's like, like rhubarb sauce. Okay, that's also extremely sweet once you get the sauce in the middle. So if this one is the less sweet one, it's good I didn't go for the other one because that must be extremely sweet. And I apologize for my face. There is no easy way to eat this. this pr the price of this humble thing is £6.50 for one cruffin, which I think is outrageous. It's extremely expensive, but I guess that comes with motorbike sound. That comes with going viral on Instagram. The verdict on this one is actually, I think it is overhyped and not worth the price. I think the cruffin, maybe I'm coming on a bad day, is a little bit stale. It's like a little bit stale croissant dough. And um, I think the best thing about this is the freeze-dried strawberries on the top and the whipped cream. The filling inside is too sweet for me. And I actually like rhubarb flavored things. I think this is just too sweet. But also, you know, if you fancy giving it a go, you should definitely give it a go. I think that I would rather have two buns from home cinnamon rolls than one of these. And two buns from home cinnamon rolls are the price of one of these. So yeah, that's my two cents. So spot one, absolute 100% worth it so far. 10 out of 10, like Buns From Home really exceeded my expectations. Spot two is a no from me, not for the price, not worth the money. If it was three pounds, yes, sure, go for it. But I would honestly, I would prefer just having a plain croissant, a really good plain French croissant. That's all you need. You don't need a fancy cuffin that costs you seven pounds. Spot two down, and now we go to spot number three after a nice walk, stretching our legs, which is like, up there. I don't know if that's going to be my favorite now, since the uh, the buns from home exceeded my expectations, but we can compare them after each other. And spot number three is going to be an interesting one. I can only say sweet and savory. Sweet and savory, if you're a fan, number spot three is for you. Let's go. And I have to say, uh, yeah, spot number two really didn't really not worth not worth it in my opinion didn't finish spot number two so what i typically do is like if i do a food tour and i don't finish all the food i'll just take it home with me and i'm actually living with uh, four other people right now so i'm sure that they'll enjoy the leftovers and the other important thing to notice is always stay hydrated so drinking loads of water in between so that the sugar doesn't go to your head i'm going to show you some sides of london we're going to be walking from piccadilly all the way through soho so enjoy So, whilst I'm on my way to Soho, I figured I'd stop, you, quick, stop quickly to show you one of my favorite Italian restaurants in London. It is Banconi, behind me, Banconi. They have two spots, one in Covent Garden, one in uh, Golden Square, which is here. And I think that one, the venue is a lot bigger here, so it's a lot nicer, but also um, the food's a lot tastier. If you like Italian food, trust me, I'm half Italian. I know the best Italian spots in London, and this one's up there with one of them. It's actually one of the only places which has uh, a lot of hype about it that is also excellent. So, Bancone Golden Square, thank me later. And let me know if you want to see a video.
Hope you enjoyed the lovely walk through Conaby Street and we have arrived at destination number three. Destination number three is Krem. It's a very small spot in the heart of Soho that does amazing cookies, but like the best cookies. Stop number three, which is Creme in London, Soho. So Creme is a place that specializes in cookies, but I'm talking the best and the biggest cookies you will have ever seen. I'll get into that in a small second. Just a quick one on them. So it was started by Chef Damien Leroux, who basically grew up, he's a French guy who grew up in the kitchen basically, so his family owned a brasserie in France. And then he trained in a three Michelin star kitchen and he's worked in three Michelin star restaurants, two of them, in the past. And then he decided to basically start this amazing cookie place, which is phenomenal. Like, I love cookies. I have a sweet tooth and cookies is probably my favorite, like my favorite sweet. But these, these things are something else. So they do a variety. They do like milk chocolate, which is like the normal one. They do dark chocolate and banana. They do a vegan one as well. But then they do this. And this is the white chocolate miso, which is amazing if you love sweet and salty. So as I said before, I've had these before. This is something that I knew about already because when I saw it come out, I couldn't resist. This is phenomenal, like gooey middle. And if you like sweet and salty, that's the thing because never ever have I had a white chocolate miso cookie before coming here. But it's phenomenal. Mm. It's so gooey and chewy. It's like your entire mouth collapses together. And the cool thing about this spot is that they're open until very late at night, I think 10 pm or 11 pm. And so, top hack if you're on a date. I have a friend of mine, he always takes his dates here. If you have a date, you want a late night treat, take your dates here. It is life-changing and one of these costs uh, £4.50 as you would have seen so more expensive than buns from home but way cheaper than Rishun so worth it in my opinion nowhere else will you find cookies like this one of these cookies is super filling one of these is like three other cookies and it's so worth it anyone who goes to Ben's cookies mate you missed the boat like Ben's cookies is so bad Ben's cookies is like a three out of ten this place is like a eight and a half out of ten trust me on this one so if you like cookies do yourself a favor Go to Krem. It will change your life. Krem all done as well. As I said to you before, I've been to Krem already. That was the only spot that I'd already tried and I still love them very much. In terms of the verdict, which one is worth it, which one is not, I would say both buns from home and Krem 100% worth it. And they're obviously completely different. Like either you're in the mood for a cinnamon roll or you're in the mood for a cookie. And the nice thing about Krem, like I say, you can take a day at late at night that you get bonus points for. Rishu, not worth it, not in my opinion. And because it's a sunny, nice day and because it's me and I'm out and about, I'm going to go for a bonus round. So I'll see you at the bonus round. And just like that, we have made it all the way to Molly Bone. So uh, Oxford Street didn't, didn't need to show you. You've seen it before and also it was crazy busy, as you can imagine. And this is my bonus round, so you call it. And it's actually my favorite dessert in London. It's not overhyped, I actually don't think it's that well known, but it's my favorite. So I figured it's only fair to feature in this dessert video. And we have arrived. We are at Laura. Laura and Marlibon, which is actually a Basque restaurant. So north of Spain, Spanish cuisine, they do a lot of really good steak and fish, but that's not what I'm here for today. I am here for the Basque cheesecake or the San Sebastian cheesecake, which is my favorite dessert in London to date. So let's go. Just ordered my Basque cheesecake, very excited for it. And just waiting outside, they're gonna serve me, which is nice. I thought I was gonna do a takeaway. And it's getting a little chilly. So far, so good. Day has been great. Like I said, so far, really pleasantly surprised by Buns From Home. I think that was the star of the show today, just because I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And just like that, we are good to go. So if you haven't been here before, 
This is my bonus recommendation. I don't think it's hyped at all, but I think it's just the best dessert in London I've had to date. This is why they do Basque cheesecake. It's also sometimes called San Sebastian cheesecake. What it is is, is very different to like a New York style cheesecake. You can see it, it's super gooey and runny in the middle. And it's basically because this cheesecake gets baked in the oven at a high temperature, but only for a short amount of time, which is why it gets this really charred look on the top. So this black feel and then the gooey center. I mean, it is phenomenal. So, I mean, I'm going in. You see, it's like a molten center. I have no words, no words. It's so different to a normal cheesecake and I love normal cheesecake as well, but this really hits the spot. It's something different. So highly recommend you coming to Laura, giving it a try for yourself. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Comment cheesecake if you've watched till this part of the video. Like and subscribe. All right, my friends, and this finishes my food tour for the day of all the sweet spots in London. Laura was nine pounds per slice, so it is a little bit more expensive, but that is because it is a fine dine restaurant, and typically you'd go there for a sit-down meal rather than, you know, just a slice of cake. However, if you haven't had Bus cheesecake before, I highly recommend you giving it a go and letting me know what you think. It is very different to traditional New York-style cheesecake, so I'll say that first. But I'm a cheesecake lover. I love them both. I don't discriminate my cheesecakes. And like I said, this is actually my favorite dessert in London to date. Probably followed by a close second of buns from home for now. I was pleasantly surprised and I will be going there again. If you like the video, please drop it a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content around London and food spots that you should hit, whether they're worth it or not worth it. So with that, I'm going to see you in the next one.